Hey everyone, welcome to World Building and Background Design. Um, maybe you have taken the World Building and Character Design first. Uh, if not, that's absolutely no problem. It's not a prerequisite for this course. Uh, but they both share a similarity in that they're both very um, storytelling focused. That's kind of the world building aspect of both of these courses is that we're thinking beyond just designing a nice looking background and be beyond just designing a beautiful looking character that looks believable. Um, it's about telling a story in each of the, whether it's a character or background. We want this to really feel like a, a believable place with a lot of personality. So believability, personality, storytelling, that's what the world building aspect of these courses are all about. So in this course in particular, we're looking a lot more obviously at, at, at the environments around the characters for an animated production. So that means interiors, exteriors, linear perspective, more organic um, free flowing perspective that you would see in nature, like with forests and hills, how to, how to render texture so that regardless of what you're, what you're drawing and, and, and trying to, to, to model, um, it looks like whether, whatever texture it might be, whether it's rock, wood, stone, grass, et cetera. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna start in this course by creating some very, very simple stories for the scenes that are going to allow us to draw them in full uh, detail with, with a very vivid um, imaginative perspective. Um, so we're going to think about where, the, where we're placing the camera when we're looking at an environment so that that environment is depicted from the most compelling possible view for the emotional quality that we want to deliver. Uh, so this is a really exciting course because as much as, you know, character design is, is one part of a production and, and background design is just the background, um, it isn't just the background. The background is absolutely full of character, um, the objects, the texture, Everything in the environment tells us a little bit about who lives there, who visits there, who frequents this location. Or if no one frequents this location, it should tell us that too. Um, the whole point of a background is it needs to communicate the story from the image so that when it, when it comes on screen, even if it's for a very short amount of time, we can kind of imagine, all right, where are we right now? And what is, what is the emotional mood that we're meant to we're meant to kind of visually see. Now viewers may not be, um, they may not be thinking about all those things, but I can guarantee that they receive it. They receive the emotional quality of the scene um, based on how good of a job the artists, which is us, um, are at depicting it, right? So this, this course is kind of all about all the different kinds of backgrounds that you might need in an animated production. And the best part about it is that you are in the driver's seat. You get to decide what the story is of the image, um, and how, you know, how close are we, or far away, is it a wide angle lens or tele telescopic lens? Um, there's a, a huge amount of choice, but I'm gonna help uh, add some constraint into the mix so that your creativity doesn't fly off the handles, um, so that you're creating, uh, by the end of the course, we'll have one interior and one exterior, and then one of those is gonna be very focused in linear perspective, and one of them will be very focused on the more organic perspective, as I'm calling it, which is um, more like just less, less of a linear grid applied to a scene. Like when you're dealing with rolling hills in a farm, farmland, for example, you're not gonna be seeing a, a perfect flat grid. It's gonna be kind of more, more organic shaped. Um, so those are the two backgrounds that we're going to depict in this course. First, in week one, I'm going to analyze uh, a bunch of professional artist backgrounds and tease out some of the interesting parts um, in each of them uh, that we're really gonna be talking about throughout this entire course. So let's, let's dive right into looking at these backgrounds. So first I wanna show you some, some great examples of, of different backgrounds. Some of these are going to be line art, some of them are going to be finished paintings. Um, it's nice to see both the process and the final product. Um, but all of these are in and around um, the, the realm of animation. So some of it is kids TV shows, some of it is feature film. Um, and, and even through this, you're gonna see a wide variety of different, different artistic styles um, because many of the studios are trying to actually still innovate with their backgrounds. So I'm gonna show you some that 
are more typical of what you'd expect from animation, and then some that are actually pushing the envelope a little bit more so that you can kind of see a little bit of the, of, of the difference of the spectrums that, that we consider when we're making a background, okay? Um, so you're gonna probably, probably recognize a lot of these because they're from a lot of movies, but you might not because the background is, it's so important and yet we, we kind of don't, we always see the character. Everything is so character focused, right? Um, you know, sometimes the background is just designed in a way to allow the character to move through it easily. Um, so it's interesting to look at the backgrounds just on their own, absent of any character in them. Although I think actually in some of these examples, there actually are some characters. Um, sometimes they kind of don't, uh, don't separate them, at least when you're looking for the concept art online. Um, so yeah, and some of these are, are done t traditionally. So using a uh, traditional medium, pencil, paper, paint, and, th and then some, most of them, especially these days are done digitally. So I'll show you the difference. Um, it's really neat to see and consider the differences that they each evoke. And then some of the ones that are digital don't really look like they're done digitally. They look very tactile and very traditional. So um, it's really fun to play and explore with this. But for the sake of this exercise, um, and, and, and much of the work that we're going to be doing throughout background design, um, we're mostly going to be talking about line art. Um, that is the, the sort of goal because this is about design. It's not about digital painting. We have another course for that. Um, so yeah, so let's, let's, let's dig in. Okay. So. Starting with a very, very old <laughs> classical background. This is from 101 Dalmatians. Um, so notice that you can see the pencil line, um, the, the, the scanners that they used in the sort of mid-century, 20th century uh, were, you know, this could have been, this could have been a, a, the lossiness of scanning artwork and, and the nature of sort of losing some of those fine lines or it could be an intentional effect to, to make the lines look a little bit distressed. Um, I'm guessing it was probably the former. <laughs> uh, it might not have been super intentional, but uh, yeah, really, really fun background here. Also, the color is really neat because it's really flat and non-distracting. There's a little bit of uh, value added to depth, um, a little bit of shadows indicated, but it's also quite designed. It, it's, it's fairly... Um, you know, we get a lot of shapes that are just less less about realism and more about kind of um, flooding uh, areas with color that don't necessarily correlate exactly to the line work. Here's another one. This is a nice line work. This is something more similar to you to what you would make if you were um, assembling your portfolio, for example, for a program like animation. Um, so the line work is really, really good. It really, you know, in this one, the line work perfectly tells us the story of what we're looking at um, first and and what are kind of um, behind. You know, it, it tells us what's, what's in the foreground, what's in the middle ground, what's in the background. And it's also, so this might be sort of invisible to you if you're not used to looking at background line art, but but the, notice the detail clumping in different areas. Um, there's, there, there, there's little areas of intense little detail where you get a little bit of rock, a little bit of grass, maybe some objects, but then complete flat areas as well that, that um, you know, give, give you a sense of space as well. So although it's quite busy, there's a lot going on, um, it doesn't necessarily overwhelm the viewer uh, because a lot of areas have a lot of space. So I could easily imagine a character moving through this environment, um, especially, you know, the, the line is one thing to set up the line work well so that we can see how the depth works. But then another, the next step is to kind of, once you add the value in the color, then you get to decide how loud the different elements of the background actually are. Um, so yeah, I, I really like how there's a lot of space in this. I think this is something to really take with you. This is another another very old one. Um, you might have been able to recognize this one. I'm not sure, but it is it is Pinocchio. So very very old. Um, it is obviously traditionally painted. 
Uh, it looks like watercolor or gouache, uh, something like that. Um, but it, you, you can you can almost feel the texture of it. It's really really well done. Um, in in the early days of Disney when they were doing everything traditionally, uh, they spent so much time in the painting and the rendering, developing the color, uh, the light and dark. It's it's very it has a very classical sense to it. Um, there I think there might have been a, a little bit of airbrushing every now and then too. Uh, to get some of the nice glows that you see, because there is a really fine sense of glow, and that takes a lot of planning, especially especially traditionally. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was a little bit of airbrushing here and there, uh, just to get that effect. But yeah, really nice background. This is going to contrast nicely with a with a background from Klaus that we're going to look at later. So this one is from Castle in the Sky, uh, a Studio Ghibli uh, film, and um, it has a similar feel to a lot of the early Disney artwork, actually. Um, a nice, really nice texture density. This, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention texture density a lot throughout this course. When I mention texture density, I mean the kind of loudness of, of the texture on different objects in an environment. Um, so the wood, the wood grain, for example, is a great example of this, where you see, you know, so there, there's some fine wood grain, and then there's some darker lines that separate out the actual wooden boards one from it you can see the boards separate from the big heavier support beams um, so there's dark lines to separate those but in the actual wood panels themselves um, the boards you see this fine little wood grain that is not loud at all so that's great so this is a, an excellent way to add texture to your to your environment without having to um, make that texture very loud. You can just lightly indicate it and then it gives us a sense exactly of the kind of thing that we're looking at, whether it's a kettle or a basket or a wood panel or bricks. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's really worth thinking about that deeply because as you start to render your own environments, especially just the line work, you're gonna notice that um, it, it can be sometimes tough, especially if you're going for a very cartoony style that doesn't allow you this much range in the realism and the, in the realistic depiction of the objects in your environment um, because you have to kind of simplify things. When you're cartooning, everything is obviously very simplified. This is actually quite a realistically rendered background. So, um, you know, we're not gonna have the same cartooniness that you'd see in like a kid's TV show. We'll see some of those later. Um, and, and those can be more challenging because you need to kind of get the essence of these objects and this texture but in a very, very simplified way. So we'll talk more about that. Actually, here, here's a good example of this. <laughs> um, this, uh, this background, really neat little perspective here. Um, it's kind of, it actually, you know, th this, if you look at this, this, this foreground building with the big uh, kind of tanks that are attached to the wall that kind of have the pipes that go into the wall, into the building, um, You'll you look at the perspective of just that building alone for a minute, uh, because you'll notice the the the, the vanishing points are very uh, intense. This is almost a this is like taking a picture with a wide angle lens, where you're getting almost like some uh, there's some distortion. The uh, distortion is something that we're also going to talk a lot about throughout this course. But the distortion, you know, it, that building, the edge looks very very sharp uh, from a naked eye when you're just looking at it. You probably wouldn't see this much distortion. It would look a little, a little. Um, those well, the vanishing points would be much further apart. Um, and I'm going to do some demonstrations actually in this class to kind of talk more about vanishing points. But if you've done any perspective classes so far, you'll you'll know the terms horizon line and vanishing points and station points and things like that. Um, but again, we'll go over this soon. So another one, very cartoony. Um, it has a a nice sense of, again, this is kind of what I was talking about. You need to imply texture very, very simply without overdoing it. Um, and I think this is a great example of that. So we see the bricks, um, we see the shingles, which actually look like a similar texture to the brick, but because the shingles are on the roof, we, we get a little bit more. And also the silhouette of the roof gives us a bit of a sense of the texture of those shingles. Um, same with the tree, right? The silhouette of the tree makes it look kind of fluffy. Um, and then those interior shapes within the tree emphasize the fluffiness of that whole shape versus just the outside. Um, but everything's obviously very cartoony here. So this is a complete, 
this is a designed environment, very, very designed. Um, so this is where you have to be kind of simple. You kind of have to develop a bit of a, um, a line language when you're dealing with things like the little tufts of grass. You'll, you'll notice how the tufts of grass all have a similar kind of uh, feel to them, kind of like the bush in the tree. Um, both of those and how they're rendered, they look very similar. So there's a certain um, formula to, to making the different shapes and objects and textures in this environment. Um, so that's something to, to keep in mind when you're working with a more cartoony kind of style. Kind of like this last one. This last one with the, with the big industrial building. Very similar. Very similar. Um, it's, you know, it has a, a certain style to it. There's still a lot of a te texture implied here. Um, feels definitely more uh, grungy <laughs> than the next one with a, with a house. But um, it still has, you know, a lot of simplification involved in as well a little bit less so it's a little bit more realistic than the than the house than this one okay so here's this is another dimension that we should really talk about is the historical era um it, it's feasible that this environment actually could exist now but just as likely that this is from a different historical era um, this, you know, the, the rocking chair, the table, it, the table almost has like a Victorian feel to it. Um, so this is to, to draw something like this, especially where you're at, maybe you're a, um, you know, applying to art school, probably if you're, if you're taking this course, um, or, or changing programs or perhaps applying for a job, um, you might not interact with these environments too much anymore. It's just not very common. Um, so this is where... I'm gonna guess that the artist had to do a, quite a bit of research to understand the different shapes, the different architecture, the different ways that uh, objects were designed in that era, and then simplified some of those designs and then applied it to this background. That's the typical process for doing a, a more historical, um, more historical piece like this. Okay, so now we've got some uh, some color work. Um, this one's really, really fun. Um, this is a, a, a new kids TV show, I believe. And it, you know, th this style is really coming back. I gotta say, I see it a lot. Um, it's, it's, it's in Klaus, uh, the movie uh, from a few years ago by SBA Studios. Um, the very similar shaped, uh, shape language to both the houses and the nature. Um, and honestly, th this harks back to early Looney Tunes days, this kind of background. And, and even before that, uh, to Avend Earl, a, a very uh, popular um, artist, at least in the animation community, because of how he inspired the Disney artwork, the Disney background, especially early on. Um, so a lot of artists are going back to this time um, because the shapes were just so fun. Everything was very simplified, but um, you could still... Well, I find now in particular, people are, re are rendering the environments more. So they're adding more detail but applying that detail to super simplified shapes. So that's kind of what's happening. Um, you can see the barn, you can see all those barn boards, you know, it's fairly detailed, but the overall shape is very fun and very graphic. So graphic meaning almost like it only exists in 2D space, not really 3D space. An example of this is the chimney on the red roofed house. That chimney um, looks very two dimensional. It looks actually much more two dimensional than the house itself, <laughs> but even the house itself, is almost like you know the, the the perspective is 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 very forced. Um, it's very contrived. Um, so the perspective doesn't really make sense. It's kind of more of a caricature of perspective, a little bit more of a designed environment. Um, so yeah, with this in background, uh, I mean the color is a lot to. There's a lot to be said just for the color. It's really really beautifully designed, fun shapes, just kind of fun background overall. Interesting to notice the very, very low horizon line and the atmospheric perspective in the back with the city. And the very graphic clouds even. It's almost like clouds from a Super Mario game. Okay, here's some more backgrounds. This is again from a, a, a fairly contemporary kids TV show. Um, but really, really fun uh, play with perspective here. So you can see in the kitchen um, this is almost, you know, I talked about pers uh, di perspective distortion a little bit before where it feels like uh, you're using like a wide angle lens or like a fish, a fish eye kind of effect on the lens. 
Um, like you, you'll see from a GoPro video, they have like a fisheye effect often. Um, so the, the, the perspective of the camera in the kitchen in particular allows you to see kind of everything, right? Like in real life, you wouldn't see this exactly like that unless it was like a big round yurt kind of structure. Um, this, is, this is a very forced perspective. And even within the objects, the, the, the stove versus the sink, the perspective is actually changing and warping as we go. So, so there's a lot of playfulness here where they're kind of using their knowledge of perspective a little bit, but they're kind of having fun with it. Kind of like the last one, you know, there's some, there's more design applied here than realistic perspective. And this is a theme that we're going to revisit often is the, is the design versus realism kind of, uh, way of thinking about, um, well, drawing environments and characters for that matter. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is another one from Castle in the Sky. Um, very beautifully painted. I think also gouache, uh, maybe a little bit of watercolor, but it's either acrylic or gouache. That's, I'm pretty positive what these were painted in. So a nice, beautiful, traditional paint. And interesting, this would be a good one to, to use in, in the assignment that we're gonna do later when we're gonna be breaking down existing backgrounds and figuring out the, the vanishing point and the horizon line, or the, the vanishing points and the horizon lines. Um, because here you can tell just from the angle that we're seeing of that house, that, that cube there, uh, that we're seeing, this camera is very high up. We are looking down from a high uh, vantage point. So the horizon line is, is gonna be way, way higher up than the actual image, the top of the image itself. Um, so just interesting to notice and to see, you know, a variety of, of low shots, high shots, uh, middle of the range kind of shots. Um, this is a very, very kind of um, high angle, high angle to this image here, which allows you to see a lot of an environment really. Like you could zoom out even further and see quite a, quite an area for when you're, when you're shooting from above like this. Another one from Castle in the Sky. Um, I love these environments. So here you can see a little bit more precisely where the vanishing point is. This is, um, you know, it almost has the feeling of a one point perspective environment uh, because those horizontal, obviously the roofs are angled, but the horizontal line seems quite perfectly 90 degrees horizontal. Whereas then you can see from the other edge of the buildings, uh, from the tops of the roofs heading, heading back into space, um, the Z axis, as I'm going to, going to refer to it again and again, um, it's going somewhere in the middle of the image actually. You can see all those houses are kind of pointing towards a a common uh, spot. So again, this is kind of what we would do in the perspective later, but uh, neat perspective. And notice how the track in the foreground and middle ground help to kind of guide the eye and make it less static. Um, so really, really neat. I love this, the backgrounds of this film. Here's another one, a super low angle shot to con contrast the higher angle one earlier. Um, so the nice thing about a shot like this, this is, this is three point perspective. Um, which we're going to talk about uh, later. Um, but you can kind of see, you know, if you follow the lines of the different structures, you can kind of see where the three points are very easily. And then all the pipes. The pipes are an easy way to see where that third point is in particular. So it's, it's neat to see a, a low angle shot like this from time to time. But it can be very tricky. So just caution when you're, when you're just starting out to, to take on something too difficult like something like this. <laughs> So another high angle shot, but, but much uh, uh, more range. We're seeing a lot more um, and just a really beautiful shot. Very beautiful coloring. I like a lot about this. It almost feels like these little factories all over the place, right? So, um, and the color temperatures are really nice. It has a beautiful, cool, warm effect going on. And, you know, considering the very vertical nature of the shot, it was either um, a very forward planning background designer that anticipated the rise of cell phones or this is a camera pan. So probably the camera, considering when this movie was made, <laughs> um, would have started somewhere in the shot and then um, panned up or down to reveal the rest of the shot. So you get this nice kind of vertical pan here. Okay, so this is actually some background design work for Encanto, uh, Pixar's fairly recent uh, film. And I like the texture density here. So there's a lot of things that the uh, background designer did here to make it not extremely loud and to make us look at the right areas. Um, you know, we could talk about the values of the character versus the environment around them, or we could talk about the, the line work and, and, and the density in certain areas. Um, 
because those trees in the background, in anywhere where there's mist, really, um, it allows those areas to be pushed back so that it feels much further away um, and everything in the foreground, because of the amount of texture we see, jumps right forward. So I really like that and I want, I want to mention that because that's something that is, you know, it's fairly, it's fairly easy to do, um, but you just need to be aware of it. You need to be aware of what's close to the camera and what's further away. On things that are further away, we're naturally going to see less detail because our eyes can't resemble that shape as well. Um, so even when you're planning your line work, this is something to consider, is the density of the things that are closest to you. This is the same artist as, as that previous one that we looked at with the houses in the city in the background. So, and also very similar to, again, Klaus and Looney Tunes with the, with the nature being represented in these graphic shapes. Um, if you're familiar with digital art, you'll know exactly how they did this <laughs> um, with uh, some kind of selection tool, whether it be a lasso or a pen tool. Um, you know, they, 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 they select out an area and then they use this nice textured brush to kind of fill that shape. Um, so this isn't quite what we're going to be doing in this course because it's full color, but you could still design an environment with just the line work alone that's going to allow you to make fun shapes like this and not be as concerned about representing, you know, every single leaf. Um, a bush or a grass can be simplified greatly uh, to, to these basic forms here that allow kind of our eye to rest a little bit, a little bit more than some of the last ones, for example like this Encanto one again. Um, this is very intense and busy and beautiful as well. They're both beautiful in different ways, but this one is, is definitely more graphic, more shape focused primarily, um, not trying to really resemble realism. It's more of a design, and yet we still feel like we're in a forest. So really neat how that works. Um, a lot of psychology going on there to kind of make sure that there's enough here to, to, for us to understand as the viewer what these shapes resemble. So that's really interesting because you'll notice that when you're designing this yourself, you can easily meet that edge. You can meet that edge where, okay, this no longer feels like a tree at all. Um, so there's that, that edge is a fine line sometimes. So you need to be careful about it. Okay. So this is, this is some, uh, believe it or not, student artwork from the Fengzhou School of Design in Singapore. Um, very, very strong kind of background design school but very, very realistically uh, focused. So this would be more for, well, for presumably a, a realistic feature film, more likely a video game. A, a lot more AAA video games have very realistic backgrounds and environments that actually look like the, the, the real thing. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind because again, depending on where you want to end up, um, you'll want to tailor your style accordingly. Animation in all of its forms is very much a group project. So although you might be, say you love drawing realistically like this background, then probably that means that you should, you should shoot more for a AAA video game studio that will, that will benefit your style more. Whereas if you're more cartoony, you know, this would be difficult <laughs> to, do, to do something like this. It'd feel very constraining. But as this is, look at how beautiful this is. I mean, all, all the the draw, all the railway ties, you know, everything, all the details in this are, are really, really great. Um, they really did their research for the different shapes of objects and blending those objects with the environment. Um, and some of the, ob some of the environments actually already rendered with line alone. Um, so they've added some, a sense of the, the different planes of the rock faces to give us a sense of the three dimensionality of this environment. Um, so really neat. This is another one that, you know, uh, you can kind of see where the vanishing, the, the, the horizon line would be, um, but also it's, it's trickier because it's a natural space. So um, as long as you know, you know, approximately where that horizon line is, that's the big thing. That's where we know approximately where that camera is and where the, the, the eye line is. Another beautiful background from the Fengzhou School of Design. Still quite realistic, but could presumably also be used in an animation. Um, the line work is very delicate here, right? You can see what they did with the background having it be a finer line and the foreground being darker line. And the midground is somewhere in between. There's kind of variation within it. Um, but lots of beautiful object drawing in this environment. Uh, very fine de depiction of different textures and details. There's clearly a lot of research done to make this happen. And wow, even a spiral staircase, which is quite a perspective headache. Um, so pretty, pretty, pretty amazing, pretty amazing work. 
here's here this looks like a place of work um, maybe in Hamilton uh, in Ontario <laughs> judging by that Hamilton steel sign um, this object uh, well the many objects in this environment feel very industrial obviously so a very very different feeling than this previous one this feels more like a library or some kind of observatory or something um, whereas this one is clearly um, some kind of workplace um, could even be high tech you know there's enough indication of of different meters and kind of radars and different pipes and stuff happening that this could presumably be a fairly high-tech environment and also a lot of very tricky things to draw in perspective a lot of rounded tubes um, you know this this would be quite a quite a mental headache there's probably lots and lots of uh, perspective lines drawn to uh, vanishing points in order to get everything just right um, but really neat, really neat, and, and clearly did their research for this kind of space. It almost looks like some kind of physics lab laboratory. Um, so yeah, it's neat to see this. Another place of work, but in a very, very different capacity. So this is obviously some kind of uh, restaurant and kitchen or marketplace of some kind. Uh, I love all the details here. There's some nice organic shapes from the, uh, the creatures that are caught and kind of hanging up above, and then all the... Uh, all the actual uh, food below um, and the ground you know everything is quite detailed and yet we can still make out each character and an object quite well that's pretty amazing this is no small feat <laughs> considering the amount of texture in this environment you can even see the tiles all the way back on the far wall um, but notice that those lines are much finer and much lighter drawn um, so that it makes us you know see things in the foreground a little bit easier also a very, very wide shot, so that's super interesting. Almost as like a wide angle lens kind of effect. Yeah, really, really beautiful work. This is another one. Um, obviously someone's room, so it has a totally different feel to it, right? There's objects in this environment that help tell us the story of this environment and the cat and the bag, you know, there's, there's lots of different things that we can get a bit of a sense of who lives here just by looking at these objects in the, in the space. That is a, a key, uh, that's a key subject that we're going to be focusing a lot on <laughs> is, is this, is, this is called the set dressing of the space. So how to make sure that the right objects are in it, that we can kind of imagine who lives here. There's the 2001 Space Odyssey poster, there's a telescope, there's a globe, there's a, a, a the, the, the lunar landing thing that the space object that landed on the moon so clearly this person is is really into space but maybe still a student uh, there's also a little video game system there and some books so this feels like a kind of uh, late teenager's room that's starting to find their interest in astronomy um, so yeah it's nice that we can gather all that just from how the objects are placed in this environment it also tells us a lot about the era obviously this is fairly modern so we we don't question this as much it's, it's just there but, you know, um, if this was 50 years ago, this would feel very different. If this was 100 years ago, this would feel very different. Could be a similar kind of astronomy-oriented room, but it would look very, very different than this. So it's nice to both try modern settings and older historical eras or even fantastical kind of settings as well. Wow, look at this one. Look at the amount of detail here. Um, this is almost edging on being too much in some spots, in my opinion, especially the floor being very, very, it's almost hatched, it's almost shaded. Um, but it is, I can still imagine a character standing out, especially if they were animated because they would be distinct from the static background. But this is an incredible background. You know, we have a lot going on and a lot of objects that, again, so this is gonna be mostly familiar to those that are have already done a little bit of perspective, but there's a lot of objects that are turned so that they are not uh, going, uh, they're not, they're not drawn according to the original two, um, vanishing points. They have created a new vanishing. The minute that you turn an object, the vanishing point changes, uh, the vanishing points change rather. So a lot of these chairs are turned, the harp is turned, even the, uh, the tilt of that piano top. There is a lot of amazingly d intricate detailed things here. So this is an incredible background. Um, yeah. Very, very difficult, not for, not for a beginner to tackle something like this right away. This is a little, a, this is a little bit more manageable. Um, there, you know, there, there's, we can see some objects, we can see the decorative nature of it, also has that kind of uh, fairly wealthy feeling to it. Um, 
but there's also some more kind of modern stuff as well. The walls are relatively plain. Um, not everything is super ornate and decorative like that chair. Um, yeah, this, this could potentially be modern. Uh, it feels maybe a little bit less modern, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a slightly hard to place, but also really beautiful. Nice how they indicated the texture of different things um, so that we can almost feel like we can grab it and imagine what that would feel like. That's a great uh, thing to be able to do in a background. Okay, so big divergent stretch here. Now we're looking at uh, some concept art for Into the Spider-Verse. Um, this is, so this is like a one point perspective background basically, you know, everything's going back to that point that we can pretty much see drawn there. It looks almost like there's a light of a tunnel back there. Um, but uh, yeah, it's neat just to see something that's more paint painted um, and very like, very, it has a very digital feeling to it. Everything in this does. Um, so how it was painted, the texture of the brush, it's, it's quite evident and feels quite unapologetically digital. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's nice to see the, a, a cityscape as well. And this had some really beautiful cityscapes. Here's one. So this, this shot was obviously very high up, um, looking down. And then here we are right on the street with Spider-Man. Um, you know, the car is coming right at us. So now look at the difference because it almost looks like a similar setting. I thought this was kind of interesting. We can see the, the, the horizon line, um, or sorry, the vanishing point there. And then we can see the vanishing point here too. Very different where the, uh, where the eye line is. This one, the camera, the cameraman is very low. Um, this one, the camera person is obviously up on a platform or flying or something. So big, big difference. Um, so yeah, just nice to kind of see, see the difference very viscerally in each of these shots. This is another one that same, same idea as the ones before, same artist, obviously, that is, is very graphic based, very textural, um, beautiful sense of color, very common color scheme throughout from this one to the other ones as well. So that's really interesting to notice. Okay, so this is a beautiful line art background. I like this one because it's kind of like nature taking over, which I'm finding is a very common theme these days among many backgrounds is seeing some objects that are obviously drawn in linear perspective where we can see very obvious vanishing points and horizon lines. And then other objects are kind of, uh, well, attached to them or, or affecting them in some way. Um, so this has a really nice blend of, of soft textural aspects, the forest, the, the leaves of the trees, the grass, and then these harder objects like the structures and obviously the cars. Uh, and the, the, it looks like some kind of cinema marquee or something in the background. So uh, some familiar things and then some very natural aspects uh, floating into the environment as well. So I, I like these kind of uh, blends. I think it's really, it's really great. I wanted to show this one because it, it, it's nice to see a background with a, a horizon line that is turned a little bit. So if you were to draw the horizon line in this one, which I'm not gonna do because I, this is part of the, the exercises for this week, um, you know, you, you would have to be aware of the, of the turn nature of this background to be able to draw that horizon line. Um, so that's my, my simple little tip here. <laughs> but otherwise, uh, it's basically a one point perspective environment. So that is kind of funny that we see, you know, just, just one point, but the horizon line is turned and look how dynamic the environment is. Um, it also helps again, like the previous one, that there's nature intruding upon this otherwise very linear in environment. Um, I like the detail of the hallway and just like the structures and the texture implied. Um, I feel like that's really nice. They're very aware of the architecture of this space. Again, this would involve some, some research. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, so I have a whole bunch of backgrounds here from Klaus that I'm gonna Go through a little bit faster. I, I absolutely loved Klaus and um, the studio that, that made them. Um, so I just love seeing the simplicity of them, but they have a nice mix of looking very graphic, but also being um, very fun and very designed. So again, the plants kind of like the other ones that we've seen a little bit, the colored ones. Um, all the plants in this are very, very shape oriented. You can see the shapes very, very clearly and they've clearly uh, conformed the, um, the different natural forms to the shape that they've designed, the container for it. Um, so just some beautiful, here's a nice, um, 
Um, kind of ominous looking one. This is where he doesn't quite know where he's going to go. Uh, he's, he's in this new environment. He doesn't know where he's going. Um, but very dynamic. Look at the lines. Follow the direction of the lines in this one. It's really great. Uh, my guess is they were referencing some real life images to inspire this, but then heavily, heavily designed it themselves after that. Beautiful background. Mist, ominous, darkness, scary. You know, you get all these emotions from a background like this. And, and this is one, even though this is the, all of these are going to be painted, you can imagine the line work. You can easily imagine the line work. You'd have to probably draw the mist in, though, because it's very soft-edged here. So here we're getting these kind of Looney Tunes-inspired buildings, which I thought were really fun, um, because they still were very nicely rendered. Um, you can see the, the different planes of the building very easily. So it feels three-dimensional, but it has these graphic, graphic shapes built into it. Um, so that's just such great work. I, I absolutely love the, the background art in this film. Um, yeah. Again, an environment that the objects tell a lot about the kind of person that interacts with this space. This is so great. Um, you know, tons of personality in this space. That's what we want to aim for. Same with this one. Just tons of personality in the space. Very different feeling, but equally uh, equally vivid and kind of important, clearly. Um, feels like a meeting of the minds uh, at the end of the universe, kind of. Um, this one, obviously, yeah, again, the objects in the space. It's amazing how much, you know, when you're designing a character, you need to make sure the clothing matches the character to make that personality read clearly. In this instance, when we're wor working with backgrounds, you want all of the objects and the way that the structure's built um, to, to really tell us who lives here. When we look at this environment, we should actually get a clear image of the character that interacts with it. Um, so I think this one is, is very good at that. Really interesting color work here. Not exactly in the purview of this course, but interesting to notice. But also the shapes, the different shapes in the environment, especially the, look at those bushes. You know, they're, they're clearly this selected shape, but it's it's, you know, the, the, the branches are going off a little bit more um, in their own way. So, yeah, really great. Beautiful color work. Nice, clear environment. Um, the, um, the foreground objects that are just silhouetted tell us a lot about this space. It feels very ominous and scary. Um, and so that's a way that you can set up your foreground to communicate the overall sense of what's going on in this space. It's a lot of nice foreground work here, actually. Here's another one that shows some objects in the foreground. We've got a clear foreground, middle ground, background. So the thing that's closest to us, the foreground, middle ground, that big oven furnace thing, and then the background is all those tools and the shelves back there that are a little bit better lit. But yeah, and the lighting in this one is super interesting. So you create contrast that way. Here's another um, horizon line that is turned, which is really neat to see. Um, I think that's, 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 it's great to have, um, to, to show like a dynamic shot like this because we can tell that this big slope going downward, which is something that is, can be difficult to indicate. So this is, you know, let's not take this for granted, but this slope that is going downwards, um, it's, it's clearly meant like the sled's gonna go down this, this basic a road basically that they've drawn. So the, 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 the tilt of the camera really adds to the dynamic quality of the shot. Another nice shot that, you know, you can clearly map out the, the the vanishing points here. More nice design work. Very, very basic shapes. Um, so it's not it's not too loud. You know, we get lots of clear, but and yet we can see the roundness of things. It feel everything feels very round, like you could imagine what it would feel like to touch it. So I love this mixture of both graphic texture and um, and shape, but then fairly realistically rendered. I think that's a really neat combination. Beautiful color work, again, beyond this course, but still, just how can you not mention it in shots like this? This one too. Um, more, more, more clear uh, vanishing points here. So just, just, you know, mentally note it. Really dynamic shot of this town. So, yeah, I mean, what more can you say about it? It's just great. I love this image too. This is the, the two of them um, sitting there looking at the town and, you know, it's funny to see these very 3D looking characters that clearly occupy space, but then we have this very graphic looking town, 
but it still feels three dimensional. Uh, that's just amazing to me. Uh, you know, very, very careful work there to make that happen. Okay, so here's um, back to more of what we're probably going to be doing in this course. Uh, line work um, and some nice texture. You know, looking at the grass, the different plants. It's it's all very designed and has a specific shape language to convey what all these things are made of. Um, and yet very simplified, so really great job. Okay, so these are some different ones. If anyone has seen any of the Cartoon Saloon uh, films like Secret of Kells, Song of the Sea, or Wolf Walkers, you'll have seen some of their in crazy, their, their incredible, in crazy, there's a new one, crazy and incredible um, backgrounds that break the sense of perspective entirely and allow us to flow in this kind of abstract realm um, so interesting, like this one with a stairway. It, it looks like a stairway, but it's almost like broken apart, like a cubist painting that Picasso might have painted. Um, so just really neat to notice that, um, you know, the playfulness of the background. Because they wanted to do something different. They wanted to make a background that still conveys the sense of what it is, but it doesn't correspond to the realistic rules of perspective. Um, this church in town on the right side here is another one that is, you know, kind of breaking perspective. It's clearly, you know, 95% design, 5% perspective um, on that spectrum. So really, really neat. Here's another one, a nice kind of three-point perspective image. Um, but still, it's more about the design and the, and the shapes rather than being realistic about the this perspective. This one feels kind of similar to cartoon, or sorry, um, the ones in Klaus. Uh, the shapes of the trees, you know, blocking out the actual forms, the shapes first, and then figuring out what the internal uh, texture of those forms are. It's kind of, it's just neat to see that uh, in something that was made well before Klaus. Here's something that was from Song of the Sea, but actually looks a lot like Wolfwalkers as well as a similar background. I think the same background artist. Um, so the intense, beautiful texture of nature is very evident here. Really, really nice. Here's another one of these kind of abstract environments that almost look like a, what's called an orthographic drawing, which is a, a drawing that you'd most often see if you were um, taking architecture, where you're, you're seeing um, the front, the side, the top views of, of, a, of a building. So it almost feels like that, right? It has this kind of illusion of this is in the foreground, but it's like looking at being looked at straight on and from above at the same time. It's really, really neat. So they're really kind of breaking perspective and bending it to be an interesting design rather than being realistic. So you got to hand it to Cartoon Saloon. They're really pushing the envelope here. This is an old one. This is from Snow White. Uh, very beautiful. Looks like watercolor. Um, very, very delicate. Lots of space but having some playfulness with the shape of the buildings as well. Um, so just really, really beautifully rendered and very soft tones overall. Um, you can totally imagine a character moving in this environment because there's so much room for them to move. Nothing is too loud that it would take over from the character. So just really beautiful work. Another one from Song of the Sea. Um, again, even in the nature, in some spots, it's very, very uh, shape-based and graphic. So I just love how they play with that. And yet the, the texture, the watercolor texture of the background is incredibly ev evident too. So it's just really neat, really neat style that they've used in their backgrounds. Yeah, here's another one. So line is also very uh, important to their work, not just shape. The lines in the rock in particular, really, really neat how they do that. Again, looks like it's being looked at kind of from a far off helicopter, but looking through a teles tele telescopic lens. That's kind of the sense that it gives you here. Um, so you're very, very high up, but it's almost like, so it's almost like you're looking at the city from above, but also from the side. It's, it's, it's very bizarre. Um, there's even some actual illusions here with the windows to the top left of the, of the square where it looks like the ground, but then there's there's windows there, so it's a building. So again, it's it's almost like M.C. Escher. Uh, M.C. Escher's drawings are notor those illusions that you'll have seen before where it's like an endless staircase. Um, this almost has that same sense. So really, really neat, kind of more like a logic puzzle <laughs> than a realistic background. More beautiful artwork from Cartoon Saloon, same kind of idea. 
tons of tons of personality in this environment. This would be great to have something like this. Um, all the images, uh, clearly, you know, religion is an important aspect here. So uh, just, yeah, really neat texture too. And again, the whole uh, from above and and below, it, it, it's super bizarre. It's like no perspective in this shot at all. It's pure design. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some the very very we're we're gonna be talking about perspective a lot throughout this course, um, but I'm gonna go through just the basics uh, of this uh, of using perspective for those that are totally unfamiliar with it. Um, so I'll show you a few examples of one, two, and three point perspective and how to how to do that, how to kind of determine what we're looking at so that you can better understand when you immediately when you look at a background like the ones I was just analyzing, if it's one, two, or three point perspective, okay? Um, so, so I'm using Adobe Photoshop here. So basically when you're using one point perspective, that's when, and actually, should give us a good sense of it. Okay, so one point perspective, a um, few things we need to go through first before we dive right into that. So basically there is the horizon. So I've mentioned all these things when I was analyzing these videos, the horizon line, uh, the vanishing point and the station point. I'm not gonna get to station point right now, but the first two I will talk about. Okay, so the horizon line is the eye line of the character or, or camera in the environment. Um, so basically, if I, um, let's just put, so the horizon line is horizontal line, um, which can be turned. Again, we saw some shots where, you know, th this horizon line was turned a little bit if, if it's like, if the camera's tilted sideways. Um, so that can happen. But also where this horizon line is placed really determines the kind of environment you're going to see. Um, so for example, you know, if it was very high, then we can tell, so I'll, I'm just gonna arbitrarily place the vanishing point right here. So that's our vanishing point, and we'll see what kind of environment we get with this kind of setup. Um, so from here, if I draw, so starting from here, I'm gonna draw some lines out from the vanishing point. So you'll see what kind of environment we get from this. This is the grid. Grids are very helpful when you're dealing with perspective. They help to kind of simplify. So you're gonna get something I'm just holding shift to make these horizontal lines. Something like that where um, you know things are getting much closer to us. So um, if there's a person standing here, like that, um, if they're back, if they're further back here, they would be now this tall, right? So when the horizon line is tall, it's like having the camera raised up and then looking down. Um, whereas when the, I'm gonna just get rid of these characters here for a second. When the horizon line is low, then we're mostly seeing sky. Right, so we'll see, we'll see clouds. We'll see buildings, if there are buildings. And we know where these buildings are gonna be mapped back to, to that vanishing point right there. Something like that. Um, so if there's like a house right here in the foreground, then we would map that back to that vanishing point. Same with the top. Something like this. Horrible tangent, there we go. Okay, so again, this is our little house in the foreground. So low horizon line makes the entire perspective different. It's more like, um, you know, like you're an ant looking up at the world or something, whereas the other one was like an eagle. Um, so that's very important. Now you can also 
raise this up like this when you're at the ground. Um, and we're still looking down, um, but you know, mo we're mostly looking at the ground. So if you want to do bushes or the characters looking down, you could do something like that. Um, okay, so let's talk about how one point perspective works uh, generally, actually. Yeah, let's get rid of this entirely. So here's here's our horizon line and vanishing point. So again, this line is the horizon line. This point is the vanishing point. So just kind of have that mentally in your mind. Um, so if 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 say we had a situation like uh, like this, actually I'm going to turn off snap. Um, actually, let's do this. So it's in the middle. Um, now from here, how to draw buildings in perspective is that one, all of the horizontal lines of the building, so say here's house. Um, I'm, I'm holding shift to draw um, th these lines, they're straight. All the horizontal lines are exactly left and right perfectly. However, the, ang the other angle of the house, so we're seeing that this is maybe, say this is the front, front of the house. So here it is, here's our very basic house. Now, the side of the house, this is, looks two dimensional right now, there's no detail to it. The side of the house is gonna go back to this vanishing point here. So this is the importance here of that vanishing point. So now we have a structure with depth. It's a very long structure right now, so let's, Let's cut it off wherever we'd like. So if I cut it off there, that's still a very long house. So, you know, you kind of just get a sense of eyeballing it. And then, and there's a way to kind of calculate pitches of a roof like this. We'll get into this eventually. Um, so then you can kind of erase the rest of this and that's your house, right? So if you want to draw a car in perspective, you could do that too. What I usually do in this case is I'll draw the footprint of the car first. So let's put this car beside the house. And again, again, all the horizontal lines are perfectly left and right, like this. And then here's our, here's our car base. So from there, you know, we can decide how, how tall we want the car to be. Whenever you're drawing something like a car, it's best to kind of like um, map out the general structure first, and then just kind of draw it. Just draw it in once you've got the basic uh, bounding box around it. So something like this. Great. So this is a car in one point perspective. Again, it's gonna be obviously far nicer than what I've got here, but this is the, the basic structure of it. So I'm, I'm measuring back to that back vanishing point on all the edges. So now I can kind of erase a lot of these. So I, I drew, I often draw through objects, like I'm drawing an x-ray of them, just so that I can kind of see, to make sure, for example, okay, here's the edge of the wall, and there's the edge of the car. So there's some space there. It's not, objects aren't going through each other. That's important to work out. Um, so here, so you can kind of gradually see our car emerging here. Something like that, wheel. Wheel, curve, curve. Again, there is precise ways to do this, but um, I'm just showing the basics here. Okay, great. So there's our little <laughs> bad car in perspective. That's one point perspective. Now, two point, so let's grab our horizon line again over here. So let's have one point here, and then I'm gonna make this a little longer and get rid of this line over here. Um, maybe even a little bit further. So here's the thing, there is a way to properly map out um, this second vanishing point. When I learned how to make two point perspective drawings, I was told once you have, you, you start with just picking one vanishing point kind of arbitrarily, just randomly, and then you just kind of place the other one somewhere. Now that isn't actually good practice. <laughs> and I'm gonna include a video um, in this week's uh, resources that explains how to do it the right way. Um, and, and then next week, I'm gonna show you how to 
do do it the right way using a software assist. Um, and, and I'm going to talk more about this next week, but it is, I find in today's day and age, it is way more worth it to do perspective drawing using digital software, um, like 2D drawing software like this, like Photoshop or Clip Studio Paint or any other that may come out. Um, there's going to be tools that make it so much easier than doing it on paper. And this is one of them, because in this case, I'm going to put my second, my, my second vanishing point over here. And again, I'm just choosing arbitrarily and I shouldn't do that because there is a method to the madness here. There is a, there is a way to determine where that second point should be so that it feels not so distorted. Now, if you wanted it to be very distorted because you're going for a very cartoony vibe, like some of the backgrounds I, I just looked at, then you might actually not put the vanishing point here. You might put it much closer like that. Th this kind of a situation like this where, you know, for example, I'll put a building here and then watch this, like this building is like, whoa. And then, wow. So it's very, very, um, it's, it's very dramatic. Like, and you could, you could get something like this, but just the, the, the actual angle here from the edge to the other edge and then the other one, it, it's pretty intense. It's like, it's got, it's got a wide angle lens effect to it, right? Um, whereas you can do the opposite as well and it can look equally distorted. For example, if I put, Instead of putting the vanishing point closer, if I put it super, super far away, like, okay, let's just go through this background for a second. Put one over here and, oh, okay, we're on a different layer here. Oh no, I'm on the wrong layer. Okay, one second, let me get out of that. Um, okay, so we'll go through this and this is one vanishing point and this one's no longer here. We're gonna put it, uh, oh boy, there's drowning layers here. Um, this one's going to be like over here. This this far of a distance is going to look equally weird. It's going to look like we're looking at a, a a town from a telescopic lens from very far away. So it's the opposite of a wide angle lens effect. Okay. Um, so like, let's try to draw a building here. So I'm going to start with the edge of the building. So this is the bottom. That's the top. Now, actually, I need to see more. So now one is gonna go over there. Oops, that's not quite right. Like that. One's going like this. So it's almost like it, it won't feel like it's, it feels very odd. It feels like the opposite. Whereas the other one, it was very extreme angles like this, you know, like something like that is like a fisheye lens or a wide angle lens. So there's like a little door or something like that. Everything on the surface surface corresponds to the other angles of, of the surface. So it'd be something like that. So here's our little factory building. And then this one would be like going that way. Right? There's our little building. So in this perspective, look at this. So this, you know, it'd be hard to even get it on the page. Um, but I guess you could make it thinner, I guess, for, the, for this uh, exercise. So that would be the building. So this is a huge difference, right? Like look at the, look at the massive difference here of this building depiction. So now in this case, there we go. Just wanna get it nice and clear. So in this case, the, the door is there, windows, 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 etc. cetera. Um, so it's, you know, it's almost like, it's almost on the same line. There's only a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, there's, it's a very obtuse angle is what you would say. So over here, this angle is very acute, maybe 90 degrees, really, realistically. Um, this one is like, pff, it's like 270 degrees. Of a, of a whole half circle. Um, so huge difference uh, between how, th 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 this, it really depends on the kind of environment you're showing and what you want, what effect you want. Um, so ideally you don't have either of these though. If you wanna really have a realistic environment or, or just like, you know, less distortion, it's good to follow the, 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 the formula or, or the, the the demonstration of the video and the resource for this for this week. 
uh, that'll show you how to properly map out this set, the two points. But you can also kind of get used to this so that you can just eyeball it and kind of know when things are gonna look weird or not. So okay, let's try to do something more standard. So let's put one point right here, and maybe we'll put one point like over here. So again, not too extreme, but enough so that we can still have some, have some fun. So let's draw that building again. So then, okay, that's our side. This is this point, right? Um, all we, I always start with that line because it lets me determine where the ground is and where the building ends. So I get to see how much is actually gonna be in the shot. Um, now I'm gonna use my line tool to kind of map it out. So again, everything on this side of the line, it's going back to that point. Everything on this side, going to that point. Okay, so this, you know, it gives you a good sense of the building. A lot less distorted. See that now, you can tell how distorted that looks now. Um, so again, good for certain cartoony productions perhaps, but generally we want something less distorted like this. So it's just the, the, the angle here and, and how, you know, how the points converge. Um, so now I could add more things in. I could add a, a building behind this one, say that's it there. So then that's gonna be going there, here, here, here. So, okay, there's our, our other little building. Actually, this is kind of a bigger building. Back here. So I'd have to look at where that doorway is. Okay, great, here's another building. And then let's put a house here in the foreground again. So. See, the trick here is that we almost need another. Yeah, because this one's on the, it's gonna almost appear to be distorted. There, so this building's closer to us. Great. Okay, so there's our little environment for two point. So again, that means just when you draw a building, here's the edge, one, these two angles are going to one point, somewhere over there, and these two are going to another point that way. And, and w when you decide you know, how far along, that's, that decides the size of the building and the scale of the environment. Um, I'm gonna talk more about this later, but when you're doing an environment like this, Especially if you're working working with an interior, um, maybe I'll do an interior in the third shot. Um, you want to get a human scale in there very very soon. So okay, here's our little human, and you want to move them around in space by actually measuring them in perspective. So I would you know I would measure the t the height of this human and then the base of the human, and kind of move them around a little bit. So okay, when he's standing here, he's this tall. Don't be confused by this middle line here. Um, that's his height. And then I can take the other point and move him back in space like that. So that when he's back, yeah, see this is difficult because he's right under that line. Let's do it from here. So say that's his height from this point of view. So then I can move him down the street a little bit by taking his height and moving it back to that point and then place him over here. And then he's that big and then he gets smaller as he goes back. So that's, it's gonna make more sense with an interior, but that's how to get a human scale in there. And you wanna get that in very soon, especially when there's cars and light posts and things like that that are all gonna be based on that human scale. Um, so, okay, for the third one. So three point perspective, let's, um, let's clean this up a little bit. So. There's one, I'm gonna put this one right over here, so right outside of the composition. And then this is where I get to kind of have fun here. Um, th the three point, third point is gonna be up or down, so I'm gonna put something way down here. That's gonna be our third one. Okay, so how the heck does this work? Okay, so let's try to draw a building. 
So, okay. Um, so instead of, you know how before, when I would make the edge of the building, I would just go straight up and down. I'd hold shift and then straight up and down if you're using the traditional materials, a ruler and a pencil and make a straight line up and down. In this case, because of the three point perspective, we are not looking straight on at a building that the vertical line would be straight up and down. Now the vertical line is changed. So say I'm drawing that same approximate kind of building. Now I need to have it be affected by this point here. So now this is the edge. So I get to determine, so maybe this will be the height of the building, right? So it's determined by this point is the, is the height line. So then the same thing continues. So now that, that this line is now determined, but it's not straight up and down, it's at an angle. Um, now I can use the top edge here, do the same thing as I did before. So it's gonna give us a sense that we're kind of Well now, again, I was just gonna do this, <laughs> but you can't do that, you need to measure it. So now this one, let's end it like over there. And then this one, like go that way. So it gives us a sense that you, you could do some really cool shots here in particular if you move the vanishing point at a different level, or sorry, the horizon line at a different level. See, this is looking straight on, so it doesn't quite make as much sense. Um, let's actually, let, let's try this, this one again. Just because, so you get the sense of how a, how that works. But if you want to really have fun with it, then it's worth like putting the the vanishing point um, way down here, even off. You see, the vanishing the, the horizon line doesn't have to be in in the in the shot. It can be it can be below. It can be way above. If you're looking straight at the ground, that horizon line is going to be you know way way above the image. Um, so okay, let's try basically the same thing, but let's expand this a little bit like that. Okay, here are our three points. So horizon line, horizon line. Um, actually, this is the only horizon line. This is just the vertical line to kind of measure where approximately that's coming from. Let's make a new layer. And let's draw that building again this time. And let's see what happens. So that edge again. And then arbitrarily, I'm choosing. Okay, so this is the bottom. So you kind of see what's going to happen here. Um, so this has the effect. Actually, let's make it like the other building. Great. So now, you know, it, it's like we're looking up at this building, right? Because of the distortion of the vertical lines, it has a sense that we're, we're, we're down below looking up at it. Whereas if you want it to be um, Spider-Man, <laughs> That's where we would probably um, do the opposite, actually. We move this way, oops. Um, let's just move this down here. Now what happens if I put the vertical, the vertical line right in this shot, like this? So now, So this is the vertical line. So I'm gonna make a whole bunch of potential lines coming from this. It's, it's helpful sometimes to do this just to kind of create a bit of a grid so that you don't have to measure everything quite as precisely. Um, in fact, sometimes if you wanna do a full grid, you would do it with the other lines as well. So kind of like this. So this is working in sort of an opposite sort of way Gonna get a little bit confusing in here though. Actually, yeah, let's forget about that for now. Um, so we'll just do it for the third line, the third vanishing point. Okay, so now we know, so this is like, okay, we're seeing like a building. This will be the top of the building and it's converging down there. So, and now we know where our other two lines are going, right? And the other vertical line is also going in this direction. So this is like, okay, we're looking at a big, we're looking at a big skyscraper looking down like we're Spider-Man. So here's the skyscraper like that. So we don't even actually see that edge. Um, right? So 
how you place these more precisely in three point, um, you know, again, this shouldn't be arbitrary. One should be, I, I have a feeling that it would make a lot more sense if this one was much further away, even further actually, like way out here. Um, so that then, See, then we can actually see a little bit of this side, which would honestly make a lot more sense. Even just a sliver, right? So then this one goes over there, and there we have our building. So that looks a lot less distorted, right? Um, yeah, we could draw another building if we want to. Yeah. Okay, so three-point perspective definitely gets more complicated, but I'm gonna show you a way to do this next class in week two that makes this so much simpler. Um, for now, what we're going to do is we're going to do a bunch of thumbnails. So your homework this week is threefold. So basically we're starting with um, you're gonna you're gonna write the the world building part of this course is is going to encourage you to kind of fill out a very very simple little story for these backgrounds so um, you're going to write out a paragraph uh, each for three different places so three different place uh, location locations um, and three to five sentences uh, for each one so that's basically a paragraph three paragraphs for again one for each location so one of these locations is a space where someone lives the second one is a space where someone works, and the third one is a space where someone visits. So these are very, very broad, but it's going to give you a little bit of context to work with just from uh, a base, the basis. For each of these paragraphs, provide as much textural detail as possible. So really paint the picture for us visually so that you're kind of imagining that you're going to present this to your art director at an animation studio, which is kind of who you'd be. Uh, sending it to probably or the background lead would be another position um, So they're gonna read this paragraph and you want them to really imagine what the background looks like just based on what they've read All right, here are some questions to help your process of imagining your background So you want to think about what historical era will this environment be depicted in? Is it a fantasy or real-life inspired environment? What emotional quality will this place evoke? Is it a happy place? sad, dreary, populated, sterile, uh, boring, you know, the, attach a certain emotional quality to the space that you're describing. Is this place taken care of or is it sort of left on its own with no one bothering uh, to do anything with it? Um, is, it, is, it is it kind of, you know, well kept or, or kind of uh, left for nature to decide how it looks? Um, and is it populated? Because then it might be kind of gross because there might be lots of people and no one's cleaning it up versus a place where there's not many people and it's very, very tidy. You know, think about that spectrum and how, how tidy this place might be. What This might be a weird one, but it's actually, I, I love thinking about this uh, for an environment. What might this place smell like? Uh, what aspects of the environment might contribute to this smell? Would it be well lit or very dark? Is it natural light or artificial? Um, so is there a lot of natural light coming in from windows or is it is there lanterns? Um, and this can be an interior or exterior on a scale of very high-tech to natural forest Where does this environment sit? So, you know a Victorian era village would be somewhere in the middle right where it's like there's natural Stuff like cobblestone. Well the cobblestones rock at least it's not like technology um, It's natural materials uh, but then there's, you know, Star Wars, which is super high-tech and very metal -y, you know? So on that range, what kind of environment is this? What is the point of this environment to the larger story? What is the purpose of this space? What is it, what, what is it used for? Who visits here? That's kind of a bigger question about, like, the story that it fits into. Um, another thing you might want to consider, especially if you want to challenge, is whether you want to do an interior or an exterior. 
Now we're gonna do um, two major backgrounds in this course. One of them is gonna be an interior and one of them is gonna be an exterior. Um, but this first assignment that we're doing in the first four weeks of this course is, an, is more focused on linear perspective. So that means that you want to, we want to be using those vanishing points and horizon lines that I talked about a little bit to, to, to build your, your, your village or whatever you might be. Um, so if it's an interior, make sure that this one uses the, the rules of perspective. It's not gonna be like a hobbit hole that has a lot of organic shapes that, you know, doesn't really, it is in perspective, but you don't have to use perspective as much. So with this one, I'd love if you could make it a little bit more linear in perspective. Um, so a little bit more dependent upon the actual horizon line and vanishing points that you set up. For the second background that we do in the second half of this course, that's gonna be more organic shaped. Um, so you could do an organic interior like a cave um, or a more organic exterior like a forest with mountains in the background. So again, that's a little bit less dependent on linear perspective. So we're doing the hard stuff first. <laughs> the linear perspective one is first. So um, when, you're, when you're writing your paragraphs for these three different places, keep in mind that these are all for a linear based background, okay? So just make sure that is clear. So the last thing that we wanna do is we wanna draw some actual thumbnails. Um, so they can be very, very messy and they don't have to be very concerned about perspective. So once you've chosen one of your paragraphs that you'd like to do um, as, your, as your background, um, now you're gonna start just sketching out the, even the most rough ideas that you have about how that background is going to work. So again, these ones are even using a little more perspective than I was thinking of, um, even though the perspective is very off. Um, <laughs> you know, you really don't have to worry about perspective that much in, in these thumbnails. That's what next week is gonna be for. We're gonna figure out what is the best uh, vantage point and how we're going to figure out the perspective for each environment, whether it's an interior or an exterior. Okay. All right. So the homework for this week is number one, we're going to analyze some of the backgrounds that I showed you today. And there's uh, some more options as well. Um, and I would love for you, uh, whether you're going to print it out and, and, and figure out the the perspective traditionally, or if you're working digitally, um, I would love for you to find the horizon line and vanishing points of the backgrounds. That will just help you to kind of see how, what, what professional background designers are doing, where they're putting those points, and, and some of the common things that you'll be finding in each of those, which will help inform your own backgrounds. The next thing is to fill out those three paragraphs for the three different environments that you're gonna kind of impose your own stories into. They don't have to belong to the same storyline. If you want each one to be a totally different uh, story or to uh, totally different film, that's totally fine. If you want them all to be a similar kind of world, that's fine too. It's totally up to you. Uh, the last thing that we're gonna do is begin to sketch out some very, very basic thumbnails for those, uh, for those three paragraphs that, that you've uh, written about. So that's, that's the homework for this week. Uh, I hope you're excited to get started. I find the thumbnailing phase honestly the most fun part of the process because that's where you get to kind of not worry so much about all the technical details and how it's done, but just kind of get all of your creativity out there on paper and, and imagine kind of what, what backgrounds you might want to depict. So let's dig in.